Assalamu alaikum. Hello kids, how are you today? Are you ready for the next story? Insha'Allah, the story I'm going to tell you is about the most important prophet in Islam. It's the story of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Are you ready children? Now listen carefully. Bismillah. The birth of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Once upon a time, many years ago, far away in the land of Arabia, there lived a man named Abdullah, son of Abdul Muttalib. He was one of the foremost leaders in the city of Mecca. He was married to Amina, the daughter of Wahb ibn Abdul Manaf. But after marriage, Abdullah could not stay with Amina for long, as he had to go on a long journey with the merchants traveling to Gaza. Unfortunately, Abdullah had died a month after the caravan left. Amina was pregnant at the time. One night, a voice said to her in the dream, The child you bear will lead his people. Give him the name Muhammad. After this incident, many miracles took place in Amina's life. Months later, she gave birth to a child. At the time of the child's birth, a beam of light came from heaven and surrounded the atmosphere. There were several miracles that took place during the time of his birth. At the time of birth of the Holy Prophet, the stone idols the people worshipped in the town fell down and broke into pieces. When the people saw this, they picked up the fallen idols and erected them back in their places. But the idols fell down again, this time on their faces. And in the nearby Zoroastrian temple, the fire which had been kept alight for thousands of years, quenched for the first time in history. In the Naushirwan's royal palace nearby, 14 towers fell to the ground, breaking into pieces. Sawa River nearby dried up instantly, and River Samawa, which had been dried for the past thousand years, was filled with water. The Prophet lived with his mother for a few years. It was tradition in those days to send young boys to live in the desert for a few years. It was believed that the desert climate was good for them and it would make them healthy. These children were taken to the desert by women who lived there. At first, no one was willing to take the young prophet with them. Then finally, a good woman named Halima agreed to take him to their home. Halima and her husband Harith lived in the desert far away from Mecca. They lived in poverty, struggling to make their ends meet. They had another child who was of the same age as the young prophet. Their camel hardly gave any milk, and their sheep were very thin. They were struggling to take care of the animals and their child together. But after Prophet Muhammad ﷺ came into their life, they witnessed great abundance and blessings. The old camel started giving a lot more milk after the arrival of the Prophet. The sheep got fat, and the palm trees in their field flourished with lots of dates. One day, Halima and Harith were looking after their sheep in the backyard of their house. The young prophet and his foster brother were playing with other children at the time. It was then that a man walked towards the kids where they were playing. He then went to the young prophet. The children noticed something unusual in the stranger's behavior, so they stopped playing and watched him. The stranger then waved his hands, and the young prophet suddenly fell unconscious. The children got frightened by now. Some of them ran away, but others stayed there to see what was going to happen. The stranger 
then opened the little boy's chest using some strange magic. The boy was unconscious and didn't feel any pain. The children who saw this were terrified. All of them ran to their homes yelling, Someone is killing Muhammad! The stranger then took out the Prophet's heart out. He then removed the black portion attached to the heart and threw it away. The black part was the part which filled people with evil. The man then washed the heart with Zamzam water, which he carried in a golden bowl. After this, he put the boy's heart back in his chest, and then using the strange magic again, he closed his chest back to normal. As soon as the Prophet regained consciousness, the angel disappeared. After this incident, Halima decided to send the Prophet back to his house. Abdul Muttalib, the Prophet's grandfather, was very happy to welcome the young Prophet back. Abdul Muttalib had a seat near the Kaaba, where he allowed no one else to sit. The seat belonged to him alone, but Abdul Muttalib loved the little boy so much that he allowed the boy to sit in the seat. When the Prophet was six years old, his mother died. The young Prophet was then brought up by his grandfather. By the time the Prophet was eight years old, Abdul Muttalib realized that he was going to die soon. He then asked his son Abu Talib to take care of the boy after his death. The Prophet's grandfather passed away too, and he was then taken care of by his uncle. Abu Talib was a poor man, but in spite of it, he took the boy home. He and his wife did their best to take care of the young Prophet. As the boy grew up, Abu Talib was surprised at the Prophet's good manners. The young Prophet soon gained a reputation for being caring, honest, and courteous. The people of Mecca respected him wherever he went. In time, people named him Al-Amin, which meant the trustworthy one. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was friendly towards all, but he especially loved the companionship of his uncle's children, Talib, Aqil, and Jafar. The Prophet used to work as a shepherd before his uncle got him into trading. This humble occupation taught him the values of hard work and honesty. His sense of responsibility soon earned him a very good reputation in Mecca. During one of the Prophet's travels, he arrived in a town where a woman named Khadija عنها, lived. She was a businesswoman, and she belonged to the Banu Asad clan. She had married twice before, but unfortunately, both her husbands died within a few days after the marriage. Khadija عنها, was an ambitious woman. She worked hard and she used to hire the caravan bosses and porters to work for her. One day, she announced that she was looking to hire a local man to lead a very important caravan going to Syria. She announced that the selected person would be given two young camels as compensation. The Prophet, who is now 25 years old and still living with his uncle, saw this as an excellent opportunity to earn and see the world. He paid a visit to the woman and accepted her offer. Khadija عنها, decided to send one of her slaves secretly along to keep an eye on the young prophet. He was also entrusted with the task of assisting him in managing the caravan workers and the animals as well. And that day, the prophet set off for Syria. It was going to be a long, and fruitful journey. Did you like the story, kids? If you liked the video, please click the like and subscribe buttons, and don't forget to click the notification icon to keep updated on all our videos. Insha'Allah, I will tell you the next part of the story of Prophet Muhammad tomorrow. That's all for today. Goodbye!